This is Byron Lazine and Nicole White, and you are tuned into episode 243 <laughs> of The Real Word. What's so funny, Nicole? What, I don't, you were, we were, you no, I, we, I didn't even, here we are. Here Word we are. Word is up. I'm in uh, TF's office. I'm using, I'm not. recognize this studio. This is the Tom Ferry studio I'm borrowing. borrowing I saw his bobblehead over there in one of your Put it out here. Should I, should, should I bobble it? Might it as well. There he is. All right. We got... We're stealing his off. Sorry. Let's start with a Brad Inman op-ed that came out this week on Inman. We'll link it up as we always do in the show notes. What our Peloton obsession has in common with the U.S. housing boom, like the rise and fall of Peloton, which announced 500 layoffs Thursday, America's geographic reshuffling has ended with high interest rates further squelching demand, Brad Inman writes. He writes now, I don't know, maybe two or three times a year, maybe four, maybe once a quarter, he writes. So we like to pick up his articles when he does decide to write. By the way, Nicole, I don't know if you saw- Little brown nosing there? Little brown nosing? We're talking about the Peloton uh, layoffs here, 500 layoffs that announced last week. This week, Picasso in real estate just announced laying off 30% of their workforce. So more- real estate related layoffs as well. So so what the heck is the uh, the correlation here between Peloton, obviously the tech bike company and our real estate market? Uh, Brad says the COVID bounce, signing up for the pricey at-home fitness program was the thing to do when you were locked down in your home. You never did it, Nicole. I, I, I didn't. That would, I thought that would be something you would do. No, but I did. That. I didn't. I But I did join a gym and I got out of the house. I got. I hired a coach. Have you ever pelotoned? Never pelotoned. Have you? I've, yeah, I've done it in the studio in New York. This is before COVID. No. When, when Tom Tool and uh, oh yeah, Tool's Tom a big one. In. He likes yeah, he, it. And you know what? It's worked for him. He's lost a ton of weight. He does it every single day. I like it. He, he's uh he's avid. About I'm not it. a cardio. I'm not a cardio gal. I'm more of like a like a like weights. Wait, yeah, you're yeah. you're a heavy lifter. You are. No, I'm um, not a heavy lifter. I just I'd like to weight you're, train. You're a powerhouse. I got it. All right. So <laughs> in, the, in the past two years, home buyers reacted to the pandemic. Obviously, scattering themselves around the U.S. looking for safe and affordable housing, and the market has boomed. So, so Brad is saying the market boom was more impacted by this reshuffling during COVID and the COVID craze, not because there was long-term demand. And Brad goes on to talk about, hey, if you moved from Brooklyn to West Palm, you're going to be moving back to Brooklyn. Yep. Like he thinks a lot of people in this article are going to be moving back to wherever they moved out of during COVID. That's what he sees coming. Uh, He also quotes Rich Barton from Zillow. So, you know, during 2020, a Zillow earnings call CEO, Rich Barton said, we are like really getting into this, what they would call the great reshuffling. New habits and norms are forming rapidly. Rich was quoted back in 2020. Working from home, we have found better, more efficient, and more healthy ways to live and work. We're not going to just go back to the way things were. This is a tectonic shift that we expect to play out for years to come. And so Brad saying that tectonic shift is temporary and you know, the working from home is not a long-term solution. Nicole, would you agree with Brad, or do you think that Rich Barton w- was more correct, saying, "Hey, things are not always going to go back to the way that they always were"? So, like, I guess it's—I I feel like it's a little bit of a mix, but I do think that uh, I mean, we've already seen people already moving back. Um, at least in our markets, there have been some people that are moving back or if they haven't sold to actually physically move back. Again, we're close to New York City. So um, people are now, you know, maybe using their homes as like a second home. And then so I, I guess I, I guess I agree with Brad. If I got to pick a side, I'll pick Brad's side. In, in the comments, where are you? Are you on Brad Inman's side? Do, do you think Rich Barton has something to what he's saying that no matter what, as we come out of it here and, you know, we're out of it, I guess, in 2022 or you know, when we look forward in 2023 with other challenges, not not just um, a health crisis, but yeah. economic challenges, uh, do you think Rich Barton is going to be more correct? Or do you think Brad Inman uh, with this article here that he wrote this past week is going to be more correct? Um, my thoughts, Nicole, I Please. think it's going to be a little bit of both. I don't think everybody's moving back. I do think that some people that can, you know, work 
you know, tra- and this isn't the everyday American. So I, th- I guess I got to no. be a little bit careful here, but yeah. the person that can work remotely, the person that can travel a lot for work may choose to live somewhere because they like it now over the or last Or they've years. just picked up a different job. I mean, there's so many yeah. people that, you know, shifted, that did a job shift too, you know, re-examined sort of what their, their future looked like um, and picked up a different job too. So I've always, I've always said that I do think what, what Zillow says is great reshuffling, moving around a lot and moving more often as technology helps ease that, you know, those moves. Yeah. That that more transactions will happen. They're just not going to happen anytime soon. I've been saying it over and over and over again. We're in a cold war of real estate where you're going to see transactions just completely plummet. plummet. Uh, Redfin's Daryl Fairweather, she broke it down this week on a podcast with The Real Deal. Main reason home prices are not falling more than uh, they have is because homeowners are not listing their house. Homeowners were able to lock in record low mortgage rates and they're better off staying put. I first guessed this at the beginning of the year. I remember sitting with David Childers from KCM and I said, hey, what do you think of my theory about this cold war in real estate? Meaning just a lot of people aren't going to sell because they got this low interest rate and a lot of people aren't going to be able to buy as these rates get, get even higher. And that's what's happening right now. So Rich Barton's prediction has certainly hit. Uh, the skid marks, and I think it's going to be on pause for for some time. But love to know your thoughts in the comments below. Nicole, we've got a negotiating racket, and, yeah. and negotiations are Are we dropping ultra, it like it's hot first? Ultra important, but yes, let's prop it like it's hot. Like it's hot. prop we, it like it's hot. We've got uh, a link down below for prop, prop stream. Nicole and I are using this in our business, okay? It's the number one team, most sales in Connecticut. And what are we looking for right now? More listings, more investment opportunities. We've looked at a whole bunch of products. Prop stream was the best. The link is down below so you can try it for seven days for free for yourself. Trust me, the people at prop stream are the best in the industry. The product's the best in the industry. We're doing it to solve the problems in our business right now, which is listings and going out and getting some deals for ourselves. So go jump into the prop stream data. The link is below so that you can try that out for yourself for seven days using the BAM link. All right, Nicole, negotiations, another big part of what Huge we're part. trying to solve. This is an Inman article. Deals will hinge on negotiations this fall. Here's how buyers agents win. So we'll go through buyers and agents. So buyers yep. and agents. Okay. Yep. We'll go through the list and just call racket or not. Right. Yep. Ask the developer to cover closing costs on new properties. So new construction. Okay, if your interest rate went up, you probably are into you know a longer time period of yep. closing this deal. Yep. Would you ask for closing costs to be paid for? Um. I, yeah, I don't see why not. I mean, again, we've we've talked about it even within our team too. You know, those closing costs could go towards buying your rate down. Um. You know, save you some monthly. So I don't. I, I'm 100 on board with asking for some closing costs for sure. Leslie Singer from Brown Harris Stevens in New York City. She's saying right now in this market, developers are a lot more willing to negotiate. So working with your agent, if you're a buyer or if you're an agent, and you get a feel for, hey, there's an opportunity here for me yep. uh, to save my clients some money. Absolutely, go ahead and do that. Leverage different listings against each other. Nicole, your thoughts on that? I guess. I mean, we. I mean, it's it's like sending over comps. You know, I don't know how many agents. Well, I guess I don't necessarily look at the comps that buyers are sending over to me because, again, my seller wants what they're asking for. So I don't. Again, I'm I'm not a huge fan of this strategy, but I certainly will would do it um, to justify my number. I just don't know if the listing agent is really even you know humoring the email. Yeah, and it depends on location, right? If you know you've got a great location, yeah. then you're going to hold firm on certain things. Like we're going to do, and Nicole's my agent on a deal right now, and we're going to hold firm because that's a special location. I'll rent special. that thing before we sell it at a discount. And so you've got to know what you've got if you're the listing agent, if you're right. the seller. What asset are you holding? And, and you've got to you- be sold. you got to be all in on it. I mean, don't just grab the number and not be sold on it. Yeah, I don't care what comp you send me as a seller, right? right? So this is my seller hat. Don't care what comp you send me. So I don't know how much leverage you're going to have in premier locations when you're leveraging listings against each other. And and remember, listen, that house that we're talking about, I want to get out of it because it's got high HOA, high taxes. I just bought another place in Connecticut that I can Airbnb when I'm not there, right? Just thinking strategically 
But on the flip side, my my loan is 3%. So will right. I not rent that if I don't get the money that I want to get? I will absolutely rent that out at 3% mortgage rate. All right, right. Number, number three here, marry the house, date the rate. This is a total racket. I hate this advice. This you is the worst it. advice you've seen on the internet. This is the worst advice. If you're one of those buyer agents, you know, please in the comments say, I'll never do this again. Hit the thumbs up if you agree that this is terrible advice. Listen, you can't, t you don't know what the future is going to look like. Nobody knew that we were going to be at 7% at the end of this year, besides MBA, Mortgage Bankers Association, I think is the only group that said we were going to be at over 7% interest rates by the end of the year. Every other projection was 6%, 5%, even high fours at the beginning of the year. Yeah. So who are you to say, you know, marry the house and date the rate when you don't know in three, four, five years what that rate's going to be. You just don't know. So you, the numbers have got to work. The numbers have got to make sense. Obviously, you've got to love the house, love the location, but there, there is a math problem you need to solve as well when you're buying this house. Nicole, your thoughts on marry the house, date the rate? Yeah, no, I'm, 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 on, I'm on your team. I'm not a huge fan of the saying. Um, I do think, though, that... Um, I mean, at the end of the day, people still need a house. So again, marry the house. Um, and again, at, but the, 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 the money's got to make sense. The money's the money has to make, make sense. sense. You can't just yeah. be crossing. Hope is not a strategy, right? No. So, so right. don't, don't be providing hope as a strategy for your clients, please yeah. get more recent data to back up the best offer. So are you, are you supplying a lot of data on offers? I'm not. Would you suggest <laughs> an agent doing that? I mean, I, again, I, I think that at the end of the day, it's uh, why not? I mean, sure, give them the, the why you're justifying it, especially if you're coming in with a lowball offer. I mean, like throw throw them out there so that at least maybe the agent will supply it to the seller. But kind of like we said at the beginning, if you're comparing it to another property, and the seller just doesn't give a hoot. I mean, I don't I don't know that this is going to help you, but yeah, the, um, depending again, on who the seller is, a letter yeah. might work. <laughs> Better. True. Emotions True. might work better. All right. Yeah. Don't don't waive your rights. I would agree right now. I never I've I I've never been a fan of waiving inspections, waiving mortgages. Well, the deal we just bought anything. I, I, I waived my rights on the deal. Well, we just all right. I mean, again, I Yes. I mean, you're a real estate professional and it made the most sense. I mean, we walked through and we felt comfortable with it, but if you're a first time buyer or I, I would never tell a buyer to waive anything. Um, yeah. I just think that you're setting yourself up for something pretty nasty. Potentially if this is your future. first, first, second, third deal yeah. as the buyer agent, you should not be advising them. And this is going to be the one opportunity you get to go ahead and renegotiate that deal. So you get into an inspection situation and maybe there, there's not catastrophic things in that report, but there are things that need to be addressed. This is your time to basically go to the seller and say, hey, do you wanna make some concessions here or do you wanna restart the process? And in this market, as we get closer to holidays and winter, it's unlikely that many sellers are gonna to wanna to restart. Uh, press pause along the same lines, elaborate, uh, Maddox elaborated that home buyers Don't shouldn't rush. feel rushed to make decisions. So basically pause, know that there's going to be more inventory. I think the winter is going to be great in a lot of markets for buyers. So yeah, mm -hmm. why not pause if, if you're not getting what you want out of this market? Nicole, Absolutely. you agree? 100% agree. I mean, I, I, I agree with that in any market. Um, you know, don't yeah, put I mean, in offers. If it, even if there's a multiple offer situation and you don't love the house, don't do it just, just so you win. So I, yeah. I think that that's true in any market. We said that when the rates were low, like, hey, there's always going to be another deal on the market tomorrow. There's always yeah. going to be something else hitting the market. All right. What do we have for oh, left, on. middle, and right? This is the segment where we combine politics and real estate. It's what every real estate entrepreneur and professional needs to know about what's happening in their politics. We've got two headlines. Nicole, yep. what are they? All right. So the first one is Fox Business. Uh, Social Security COLA update coming this week, and it could be huge. Yeah, this is cost of living update. And because of inflation now, they're saying that this is going to be this Social Security COLA update is going to be amongst the biggest of all time, maybe one that we've never seen before. And so I just want to re how does this impact you and your market when you're going and looking for listings and buyers and investors? I want to remind you where the money is. I was saying this even two years ago when COVID was hit and everybody's like, oh my gosh, the millennial buyer, there's so many of them. And granted, that's the biggest pool of buyers. 
But if you want to increase your price point, if you want to work with people in your community that actually have money, and if you want to, over the next 18 months, work with the people that are going to be doing real estate deals because it doesn't impact them at all what's happening in this economy, you want to work with baby boomers. All right. I'm going to read you a couple numbers here, Nicole. Okay. $71 trillion in asset is owned by boomers. $71 trillion in assets boomers control. That's only 76.4 million people. 76.4 million people are controlling one-seventh of the world's total assets. The baby boomers in the U.S. are the richest in the entire world. The baby boomers in the U.S. have had it easier than any generation. They had 30 years of building these 401ks where basically you could just put money in and it's all going to skyrocket. They had 30 years before we got into 9-11 in the last couple of decades that we've seen where they had major peace. In the 80s and 90s were, were very, very peaceful. I mean, they, they basically almost had three straight decades of not much happening like we're seeing today, right? We just came out of a global pandemic. There's a there's a war and there's nuclear, you know, fears. There's all kinds of stuff going on right right now. Like we Gen millennials and and Gen Z have it a whole heck of a lot harder than the boomers. And because of all this borrowing that boomers have done, we're going to catch that burden down the road. That's not the point. <laughs> the point is these guys this winter. These gals, this winter, oh, sorry about that. This winter, the baby boomers have all the money to make the moves that they want to make. If they want to downsize, if they want to move, if they want to upsize, if they want one floor living, they're the ones with the money. That's where the transactions are going to come out of. It's the baby boomers. So I'd pay attention to them. And anybody on Social Security is getting even more money. They just, it just seems like money just attracts to the boomers. They just get all the money, and that means they can do all the real estate deals. All right. Last one. CNBC. 22% of millennials are going into debt from dating. Everything is getting more expensive. So on the flip side, millennials, pay attention to what the boomers have done. They've saved well. They've accumulated assets. And if you're going to go into debt, if you're going into debt because of peer pressure on dating, I mean, you, you are really making a big mistake right now. I actually saw a TikTok the other day and, and the girl's like, you know, you know that phrase gold digger, uh, Nicole? Yes, I do. She said, hey, I'm not a gold digger, but, you know, you took me to Applebee's on my first date and I want to let you know that this is unacceptable, that I'm not going to be going to Applebee's oh. you know, if we're going to go on a second date. Sounds like something <clears throat> you'd say. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't go to Applebee's either. No so way, I, I was in bougie. alignment with her. <laughs> <clears throat> but if you're trying to keep up with everybody, this is a bad time to do it. This is not the time to try to keep up with everybody whether you're male or female, I don't, I don't care who's paying the bill. And, and even if you're just dating and you're splitting the bill, I'd advise you guys to maybe cook in, maybe do some things like that. Because listen, the people that save the money and are able to invest in real assets over the next year and a half, they're going to be the ones that in 10 years are just only saying one thing. I wish I invested more. I wish I bought more. I wish I saved more. They're not going to be saying, I wish I went to more restaurants that were better than Applebee's. Right. I, I wish I went on more dates. And there is a huge social media peer pressure around dating. I'm glad I, I'm not in the dating pool like yourself, Nicole, uh, because the pressure to spend money and, and impress people, I've seen it happen over and over again the last couple of years, is going to restrict you from buying a house. So if you're an agent, maybe you can Maybe you can help people date. Maybe you can have some some dating parties at your office, right? Maybe we could do that, Nicole, at the Connecticut office. Have a dating I want no part party. of that. No part. I feel like nobody dates in the in the shoreline in Connecticut. Everybody's already locked up. But locked up. I don't um, think everyone's locked up, but I definitely uh, you want to be a part of that awkwardness? Like you want to like <laughs> welcome awkward? What? what what's your thoughts on this? People going into debt for dating. You're asking me? Yeah. I mean, I mean does that seem ins insane to you? It's absolutely insane. Yeah. And it's funny because like, again, I, 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 I agree with her as well, but it's funny because I think in my early 20s, it, it didn't even, I guess it didn't phase me where we were going. So. Because um, you were young, but now people are dating older. Yeah, right? I guess. And, yeah. and so these, these are home buying ages and overall the 
survey respondents, which was a lending tree survey, said that they spent about ninety one dollars on a night out, which which by the way seems cheap. Super cheap. So uh, maybe they're doing something right. But listen, you can go get fa. Me and you just went and had a couple of bowls of fa before yeah. I left Connecticut. I mean that yeah. that wasn't more than. 40, 50 bucks. So yeah. But, but again, everything that's is fantastic. But, but honestly, though, I mean, you can go over to Olive Garden and spend the same amount of money as well. So I don't even know that you're really even saving money by going to an Olive Garden or an Applebee's either anymore. So this, um, this mindset, I'm a millennial and this mindset of I just want to have these experiences. I just want to live. Yeah. Well, the amount of people that take these trips, I Listen, mean, there's so many trips and you, jet setting and pop. You're going to end mean, up 45, year, 45 years old one day and you're going to look back in regret as opposed to looking back and saying, I wish I just bought more real estate. I wish I built more assets up. So yeah. if I'm an agent, I'm encouraging this younger generation, millennials, Gen Z to go and buy some deals with their money instead of dinners. And the more people you can help do that, the more people you're going to impact, not just for your own needs, but to live a greater life. So I would Absolutely. encourage you to do that. Nicole? Good. Good show. You Great gotta show. run to a closing. I We've do got have the to prop run to stream a link yep. below. You can try that out for seven days. Love your thoughts in the comments. Love for you to consider subscribing to BAM on YouTube. We'll see you here next week. <laughs>